This is the Banzai Pipeline, also known as Pipeline or simply just Pipe. It is considered the perfect barrel, perhaps the most photographed wave in the world. Each winter season, surfers from around the world aim to make a name for themselves at this wave in the hopes of launching professional careers. The right image on this wave can bring instant fame. Today, that's going to take shape with the goal of gaining valuable qualifying points for next year's world tour. This is the Vulcan Pipe Pro. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. everybody, Sal Masichella here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to the world-famous Banzai Pipeline on the north shore of Oahu, Hawaii. This is an iconic wave that unloads perfectly over a very sharp and shallow reef, creating pipeline and backdoor, the epitome of tube riding that allows surfers the opportunity to go right or left, respectively, on the same wave. Now, each year, the Vulcan Pipe Pro draws surfers and crowds from around the world surfers because as this is a qualifying event it's not restricted to only the top surfers on the world tour and the fans well because they get to witness these surfers including local hawaiians who call this their home break get to watch them put themselves in harm's way as they try to score these valuable qualifying points now when you add that the ocean swells tend to be even more consistent and perfect at this time of year than in early december when the world tour comes to town the vulcan pipe pro really showcases the world's best on this exquisite canvas just a few hundred feet offshore. Now, last year, the king, 11-time world champion Kelly Slater, entered this event for the first time, and he took home the win. Can he repeat? Well, no doubt. 43 years young, he is still at the top of his game and the man to beat. However, every surfer in this field is capable of the win. Perhaps none more feared than the three-time Vulcan Pipe Pro champion, John John Florence, who grew up with this wave at his doorstep and can arguably surf it better than anyone, regardless of the conditions. Right now, the first quarter final is in the water, so we're gonna check in with Chris Cote and the big wave legend, Mike Parsons. Aloha, guys. Thanks, Sal. We're gonna be running four man heats today at Pipeline. Of course, we're gonna be using the one to 10 judging scale. And here at the Pipeline, of course, it is all about tube time, how deep these surfers can get in the barrel, disappear from the judge's view, that will be the big scores. Well, big score is going to be upcoming right now in this quarterfinal bracket. In Heat 1, we got local Hawaiian standout Ezekiel Lau. Heat 2, John John Florence. Heat 3 coming up, Kelly Slater. And in Heat number 4, keep your eyes on Masatoshi Ono. Right now, let's check in with the fourth member of our broadcast team, Corbin Harris. Thanks, guys. We are ready to go for the final day of the Vulcan Pipe Pro with some huge names in the mix. It's four to six foot and clean. North, northwest swell coming through with offshore winds which makes it perfect here for pipeline and backdoor. I spoke to the contest director, Marty Thomas. He said it's going to favour the regular footers and backdoor, guys like John John Florence and Kelly Slater. It's going to be an excellent day of surfing. Back to you guys. Thanks, Corbin. So getting right into it, you see the conditions. Cleaning up here at the uh, Bonsai Pipeline in the morning, and we are underway. This is a local Hawaiian, Ezekiel Lau, he's pumping, weaving through this backdoor gem, almost gets eaten at the end, somehow stands up and completes a tube at the back door. Well, Ezekiel Lau there, incredible surfing, willed his way out of that barrel. We like to call that coming out the doggy door where he comes out the bottom entrance of the barrel there. Not a clean exit, but very hard to do. Zeke Lau, one of the most powerful young surfers in the world. Let's take a look here. 
drops into this wave really deep, pumping as fast as he can go. He picks a perfect line, realizing that wave is gonna pinch. He exits out the front, stands tall, let the judges know he made that wave. Excellent surfing there from Ezekiel Lau. Well, if anyone can match Pipeline's power, it is this guy. But right now, let's take a closer look at this wave. Here's Mr. Pipeline, Jamie O'Brien, taking us on a tour from above. This is your course preview. All right, we're here at Paradise Helicopters, and we're gonna go check out Pipe. Let's go. Back in the day, the river actually ran a little different, ran straight through Pipeline, which created the beast, the legend, the myth, the best wave in the world. Straight down the middle is both the lineup trees, and right there, you see a right and a left. We're just flying over Pipeline right now. The reef at Pipeline is pretty treacherous. It's, it's really flat at, in certain spots, and then there's some big holes in other spots. The worst place you can fall at Pipeline is on the takeoff. It's where you're gonna hit the reef. It's really shallow, and that's where I got hurt before, so I try not to fall on the takeoff. That's, that's my number one rule at Pipeline. The best Pipeline swell ever would be a west-northwest swell. Um, southeast winds and eight to 10 feet would just set this place on fire, and it would be a game-changing event. And that was your breakdown of Pipeline. Jamie O'Brien, I'm out. Incredible perspectives of all angles of Pipeline from Jamie O'Brien right there with GoPro. Mike, tell us about Pipeline. Well, it's such a heavy wave, and I love those shots of the reef in the bottom. You see how uneven it is and how dangerous this wave is. It's all about how steep it is on the takeoff. Let's take a look right here at Sebastian Zietz on a very good looking wave here at Backdoor. AKA Seabass driving through this Backdoor wave, comes hard off the bottom, tries to throw in one final arcing turn at the end, but the damage had been done with that barrel. And right behind him, a Ritz Aaron Brew stalling hard under the lip, driving through this backdoor wave. Can he come out? He gets clamped. Yeah, just unfortunate there for a Ritz, and he goes down, and now it's the young Brazilian's turn, Ian Gouveia, grabbing the wall. Beautiful style here, pulls up high and deep in the barrel, and he comes out clean. He's got another section here and slams it off the top, so beautiful surfing there from Ian Gouveia. Yeah, it's gotta be difficult on the backhand, especially when you're going against two guys that we know have all the ability in these deep backdoor barrels. So Gouveia, he'll make his way back out. But right now, let's take a look at Gouveia's backhand approach. Real compact, real confident. Yeah, beautiful surfing here from Ian Gouveia. Comes out of the barrel clean and lines up a big maneuver right here, slams it off the top, free falls out of the lip, and hangs on clean. Exactly what the judges are looking for. And then Seabass behind him, deep in the barrel right here. Beautiful style and technique. He is so comfortable in these tubes as he goes for a big layback jam. You can see how important positioning here is at Pipeline. He gets nice and deep in this barrel, rides just above the foam ball there, looking for that exit, and he comes out clean. So excellent surfing there from Seabass. With that last wave, Sebastian Zietz gets a 7.93, jumping him up to the top slot. Meanwhile, out the back, all four surfers battling for position. It's gonna be Ian Gouveia escaping the pack. Gouveia on his backhand, drops into a backdoor beauty. But beauty comes with a price. Gouveia goes down. Yeah, went down pretty hard on that. Looked like a nice wave. He did well to get away from his fellow competitors there. Had a great try at that wave, but unfortunately just not working out for Gouveia. And now behind him is Seabass on another nice looking wave. Yeah, streaking down the line, Sebastian Zietz finds the escape, pulls out. Seabass not looking for a huge score. That could be just what the judges want to help his cause. Yeah, it's a smaller way, but it's really hollow. This way it's cupped out on the reef nicely, and he pulls in really deep here and comes out clean. Judges love those clean exits. So a nice backup score here for Seabass. You can see how long he's in the barrel, disappeared from view. And he comes out, so well done there for Sebastian Zietz, and he is building a strong heat. Yeah, that will be good for him at 4.17 for Sebastian Zietz, his last wave. Here goes Ezekiel Lau, trying to claw back into this thing. Lau pulling in, riding as deep as possible. He's got another section in front of him. Unfortunately for Lau, the wave closing out, not offering him the escape he wanted. Yeah, nice effort there from Ezekiel Lau and really did his best to get out of that barrel, but not quite able to. There's Ian Walsh coming up in the next heat, very talented big wave surfer, and he will be dangerous in these waves here today at Pipe. Well, speaking of dangerous, Aritz Arambu, a late drop at back door, pulling in, coming out. Beautiful surfing from your Spanish standout, 
Yeah, Ritz really looking good on this wave. Just the type of wave he's been looking for in this heat. Love this takeoff right here. Really steep drop, just sticks it. Stays nice and deep in the barrel there as long as possible and a beautiful carve off the wall as he comes out. So a Ritz looking comfortable here, looking good on his feet as we take another look from the water. Picks a great line there, really high in the tube and exits out the bottom. And then the big snapping cutback for a Ritz. He'll be fired up after that wave. One more good wave, we'll see him advancing into the next round. Well, Ritz Aaron Brewer getting a 5.67 for his last effort at back door with time winding down out the back. It looks like we might have a split peak, pipe and back door. We're gonna follow the goofy footer, Ian Gouveia, pulling in and getting smashed by a back door bomb. Yeah, that was one of the bigger sets of the heat and really good attempt there from Ian Gouveia. Looked like he had everything going right. The wave just stretching out down the reef. Big steep drop, he paddles really hard, almost air drops, grabs the rail here, pulls up nice and high, has a lot of speed, but you can see that foam ball just gobble him. And then Seabass on the left, realizing that wave's just a straight closeout, and he goes down. Well, risk to reward both surfers on that last exchange, just getting a 173 and a one. Well, we're coming up on semifinals right now, advancing through heat number one of the Vulcan Pipe Pro quarterfinals, Ezekiel Lau and Sebastian Zietz. And we are all set for quarterfinal number two. Heat two, we're gonna have local Hawaiian lifeguard, Mikey Bruno, Kalani David, also from Hawaii, John John Florence and Ian Walsh. It's an all Hawaiian quarterfinal heat. So right now, John John Florence is leading this heat. He's got a 583, but Ian Walsh is looking like he might have a gem of a wave here at back door. He's having a dig. Ian Walsh from Haiku Maui pumps hard off the bottom, pulls it up high and tight through the lip. One more stall, giving it everything he has to slow down to get in this barrel. And he does a double barrel for Ian Walsh. Yeah, really nice use of priority there. Selected a great wave and just looked really comfortable on this wave right from the get-go. You see him paddle in nice and deep, all about that positioning, grabs the wall, pulls in the barrel, disappears from the judge's view, and then, as you said, stalling to stay in that barrel. He kind of gets a bonus section right there, so a lot of tube time there for Ian Walsh. Fantastic surfing, and uh, he is comfortable in all kinds of waves and very impressive out here at Pipeline. Yeah, Ian Walsh with that last effort, netting a 7.07. .07. So Ian Walsh climbing in to the leaderboard on this heat. Mikey Bruno out the back right now, trying to get back into this. These four-man heats can spell disaster if you're not right in the right spot here at back door. Here goes Bruno, he's a North Shore lifeguard, no stranger to danger over here. Pulls up high and tight, but not enough. The wave just does not offer the barrel the judges are looking for for Mikey Bruno. Yeah, now behind him, John John Florence using his priority here. A beautiful looking way for John. A lot of pumps, and he comes out clean. Incredible tube ride there for John John. Everything is going his way in this heat. Well, it would be surprising from anyone else but John John Florence, who's known for getting the best waves on any given day out here at Backdoor. It's going to be a huge score for Florence. Meanwhile, Plani David behind him looked like he was stalling to find an air section, but does not come to him. He pulls out dejected after John John gets absolutely blown out of a perfect barrel for a massive score. Yeah, look at how deep he was through that barrel and it stayed wide open. Judges love it when you come out of the barrel clean. It's a big wide open exit. Look at his technique here, full speed, about three or four pumps in the barrel, realizes it's gonna close out, comes out, and uh, very casual there on his board and a big, big score for John John Florence. Well, John John Florence grabs a near perfect nine point ride, but Ian Walsh is not gonna let him run away with it. Pumping hard off the bottom, racing down the line at back door, somehow finds a perfect exit, throws in a carve just to excite the judges a little bit on the end, pulls out clean. Ian Walsh is back in it. He really is just the type of wave he was looking for here. Nice long wall in front of him here, reads it perfectly, nice line, couple of pumps, comes out, shifts his feet here back and does a beautiful wraparound cutback there, showing he's very powerful young surfer. And uh, as we take one more look here from the water, this wave just stays open beautifully for Ian. A couple little adjustments there, comes out and rips into this cutback, feeling super comfortable knowing he's going to be looking good for a spot in the semifinal. Yeah, Ian Walsh ticked off all the boxes, a dry barrel, perfect exit. That wave's gonna get him a 6.13, jump him up into second place. So John John Florence holds on the lead, but watch out. Kelly Slater, 
your 11-time world champion and 2014 Volcom Pipe Pro Champion getting ready to enter the water for his heat. Quarterfinal number three. Always a lot of excitement with Kelly. It's the beach, but this heat is not over yet. Mikey Bruno on his backhand, dragging everything he's got to try to get deep in this backdoor pit and gets a little too deep. Goes down, Mikey Bruno. And behind him, John John Florence takes off inside the barrel. Can he make that drop? He goes down hard. Incredibly late takeoff for John John, unable to stick that one. Incredible stuff. Oh, well, Ian Walsh, one last ditch effort right here. Nice looking backdoor wave, pumps up the bottom ejects off his board, so that shows you right there, even the best surfers in the world have trouble sometimes out here at backdoor. It is no easy feat getting a perfect barrel at this beast of a wave. Well, it is a beast of a wave as we watch the replay here of Mikey Bruno taking off backside at the back door, really deep in this barrel, driving, just looking for that exit, unable to come out. Looked like he did everything right, but that wave just stretched out, and then John John under the lip, free fall was unable to set his fins and even the very best go down hard here at pipeline sometimes well mikey gave everything he had just was not enough and that'll set us up for semi-final number one john john florence and ian wallace will meet up with ezekiel Lau and sebastian zeet right now let's check in with sal masakela back at the red bull signature series studio success is about having the right tools for the job and nothing is truer when it comes to successfully navigating pipeline Choosing the right board is not just about the right of your life, it's also about being able to do so safely. But you just can't pick up one of these boards at your local sporting goods stores. You see, creating a pipeline board is a painstaking precision process that is done by both machine and hand. And only a select few surfboard shapers can truly be called masters of the pipeline craft. Pipeline is it's a real powerful and dangerous wave. When you're making a board for Pipeline, you have to keep a few really important things in mind. A lot of guys now aren't riding very long boards, they're a lot shorter. The front half of the boards have a lot more meat through them than they used to. That gives you like maximum potential to get into this wave. You need to have the right board dimensions and foam volume put a lot of rocker, which is the bottom curve, so that when you paddle into the wave, as you come down this transition, you easily fit into that. It slows the board down a little bit, which really actually helps you to stay in the barrel longer and with a little bit more control. I think that surfer-shaper relationship is real crucial. Sometimes it's direct feedback that I work off of from them, and other times it's me making changes on my own. Working with a kid like John John, it's so easy. A lot of my boards have really been developed around him. It's a special thing. I don't think a lot of shapers have had that kind of an opportunity. These guys are the best in the world, you know? They put their lives on the line for surfing. I always try my best to get them a good surfboard. 90% of the board's done off program and the machine, but there's still that 10% of fine tuning that makes or breaks a board, actually. You always need that human touch on there. There's so many different little aspects that go into building a surfboard. It's not a perfect science, so once you get that one perfect magic board, put it on ice, keep it on the side, and take care of it. <laughs> We're on to a super stacked quarterfinal number three. In this heat, we're gonna see 11-time world champion Kelly Slater from Puerto Rico, Brian Toth, from the tiny town of Hana in Maui, Hank Gaskell, and of course, from San Clemente, California, Chloe Andino. Yeah, this is another very stacked heat. You got the uh, veteran 11-time world champ. He's going right here, Chris. He's wide on the reef, beautiful looking wave. He pumps through this barrel, can he exit? And he does, the magic man himself, Kelly Slater, with what could be the first perfect wave of this event right behind him. Hank Gaskell, dreaming of perfection, ends up with disaster. Hank Gaskell going down, tons of action in the early parts of this heat, as you see, lots of water moving around and surfers jockeying for position. This is Chloe Andino, up and out. The wave just did not pan out for Chloe. Yeah, unfortunately, that wave just ran off a little fast as we take another look at Kelly Slater here, really deep on this wave. 
pumps and gains all that speed on that forefin surfboard, disappearing from judge's view for a very long period of time. Incredible surfing there from Kelly Slater. Yeah, Kelly Slater, I mean, there's a reason why he's won out here at Pipeline nearly 10 times. He is that in tune with this wave at Backdoor. The harm was done. Kelly Slater getting the first perfect 10 of this final series. The champ of champions making his way back out to the lineup. He's smiling, he's happy, but he knows his job is not done with three very capable surfers still in the lineup. Yeah, this is still a stacked heat, but a perfect 10 there for Kelly Slater on this wave behind him on the backside, dragging the wall here. Brian Toth from Puerto Rico, that wave stretches out on him and closes out on him. Nice style there, but unable to exit is Brian Toth. Well, Kelly Slater with that perfect 10, it's got to have motivated this next surfer who's with Corbin Harris. It is John John Florence. John John, congratulations on making it through. Are you through to the semifinals? Um, it's predominantly backdoor. Do you think that's going to help you a lot? Um, yeah, I don't know. I like piping backdoor equally, you know, it's, but today's really fun. It's a really good little backdoor day. Um, oh my gosh. And there's some really fun ways. The winds are blowing to the right, so there's just some good ramps too. And yeah, it's cool. Who else are you looking out, out there for today? Oh, I mean, everyone, this heat right here is going crazy. Chloe and Kelly and all those guys are insane. And so kind of everyone, you know, I had Ian in my last heat. He's always a scary guy to come up against. And yeah. All right, good luck moving forward. Cool, thanks. Great insight there from John John Florence, who can't keep his eyes off the water. Right now, Hank Gaskell, he's got a little runner at back door. He's trying to push through this wave. Ends up exiting clean, but didn't get the deepness he wanted in the barrel. Yeah, behind him, Chloe Andino dropping into a nice looking wave here. Hits the brakes, pulls into the barrel, really deep pumping. Can he get out of this one? Incredible stuff there from Chloe Andino. Excellent score as he goes for the big air and lands, unable to ride out of that, but the damage was done. Nice surfing from Chloe. Well, it seems like Chloe Andino knew that he needed something massive to get back into this heat. And I think this is just the wave he was looking for. Beautiful takeoff. Yeah, and then he just kicks it right there, stalls, and then redirects in this barrel, weaving through this tube. Really well read there from Kolohe, and just the type of score he was looking for. Gonna get way up into the excellent range as we see a beautiful view here from above. Snaps it and stalls, and then starts gaining all his speed and just picks the perfect line. Well, that wave was about as close to perfect as it gets. A 9.5, so Kolohe and Dino jumps up into that second spot right behind Kelly Slater, who's sitting on that perfect 10. So a huge heat underway right now here in quarter final number three. Kelly Slater with that perfect 10 is gonna hold on to the lead. Chloe Andino is gonna be right behind him in second place. Kelly Slater again finding a gem at back door. Pulls up under the lip, pumping through this wave. Comes out clean, looking for the air section. Goes for the massive front side air comes unglued at the end, but like we say, the damage had been done with the tube. The judges, they like the airs, but they love the tubes. Yes, this contest is all about the barrel. Beautiful stuff there from Kelly Slater. Underneath priority, picking a great wave and another excellent score. Here's Hank Gaskell looking for a nice little drainer here, pumps through this one and comes out clean. So a better wave there for Hank but he needs those excellent scores to fight back in, get in contention in the seat as Chloe Andino and Kelly Slater have posted the big scores. Yeah, here goes Hank Gasco. I mean, you gotta love this guy's style. So smooth and fluid. He was looking for something real big here, but the wave just did not cooperate. He's still got a four, so one of his higher scores, but Kelly Slater, talk about drama. Yeah, his board looks great. It's so fast, that four fin. He just reads this way better than anyone in the world, busts in the huge air there and goes down. But the most successful competitive surfer ever in the sport out here at Pipeline, winning the Pipe Masters seven times. And of course, he is the defending champ of this event as he busts a big air there and goes down. He just has that special relationship with this wave, Kelly Slater, and uh, showing his stuff here today. Well, we got a dogfight to the end, Chloe Andino coiling up like a cobra, pulls into a nice little tube right at back door, finishes solid with a beautiful hack. So Chloe Andino throwing everything he has at this back door wave, rides it all the way to the beach. And that's gonna be enough for Chloe Andino to hang on to that second spot. This wave for Chloe, a 5.6, solidifying his advancing position. Yeah, great backup wave. Nice little barrel there. Beautiful wrap right here. Kicks the tail. Real strong surfing and another tight wrap right here. Just beautiful style. 
Looking really comfortable. He spends a lot of time surfing pipeline, and it is showing here as he's been a semi-finalist in this event before. He would love nothing more than to get into that final as we watch another look here. Beautiful cut back there from Kolohe. Uh, every angle covered here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Beautiful shot right there of Chloe and Dino going mental on a beautiful wave at back door. Well, our competitors in third and fourth are scrambling right now. Spectators on the beach gearing up for what's looking like a stacked semi. Brian Toth could have one more chance if the right wave comes to him. You see Kelly Slater in the lineup looking very calm and collected. But don't look now. One last chance here for Brian Toth, your surfer from Puerto Rico on his backhand, grabs his rail, pulls in, driving through this tube. He needs a big score, but does not come out. Brian Toth goes down. Yeah, a little unfortunate there for Brian. That wave just stretched out across the reef, a smaller wave, so that is not gonna make a difference for Brian Toth. Well, there's your surfer advancing in second place, Chloe Andino with Kelly Slater taking the lead with a perfect 10. So your semi-final number two, we're halfway set. Right now, let's check in with Sal Masakela back at the Red Bull Signature Series Studio. Now, you might think that if you come from legendary Hawaiian surf royalty, there'd be a lot of pressure on you to be on the world tour or win titles like the rest of your family. Also add to that having a famous wave like Pipeline in your backyard, it ups the expectations. But Mason Ho is not your conventional surfer. With nicknames like Ambassador of Fun and the world's most entertaining surfer, Mason definitely breaks the mold by making sure he is the one having all of the fun and doing so on his own terms. Well, my dad was like one of the first professional surfers. I heard the first to get paid for surfing, and then my uncle Derek is his younger brother, and. He's the first Hawaiian world champion. And my sister is also a really good surfer. She's on the tour, and she's always one of the ones contending for the world title. And then there's me. I'm just like <laughs> trying, surfing, having fun with it. To me, Mason is very free spirited. He's against the mold, and I love that about him have a lot of confidence once I hit that water. Whatever little line I see, whatever I want to do, I don't know, I just do it. Boom. <laughs> Breaks it off the bottom, goes through the front side air. The Vulcan Pipe Pro is very special to all of us just because it's all the locals. Pretty much we're, we come here to the pipeline every day. It's always cool getting in the water with the best guys, even if it's like free surfing. Yeah, Kelly and John John and Sea Bass. It's fun surfing with them anytime. The pressure's not there anymore from the family because I just feel like I've grown out of it. I can't be as like good as my dad and my uncle Derek. They've already like they paved the way. So I'm just kinda like trying to follow their way, but everything's not really that way, so I'm just doing it my way. But I know what I want is to get on the tour and I'm shooting for it this year as hard as I can. My biggest dream would be for my brother to be on tour with me so I could just be traveling with him the whole year instead of just getting to see him at a few events. Well, there's a reason why he's known as the most entertaining surfer on the planet. Mason Ho, a third place finisher here at the 2014 Volcom Pipe Pro, looking to do damage again this year. And here he is, Mason Ho, on a backdoor wave, driving through a barrel, double stall. Mason Ho, hard off the bottom, cranks a nice cutback, straight into a backside snap, goes down. But Mason Ho starting strong here. Yeah, really strong. Mason, definitely one of the best surfers in the world, especially here at Pipeline. So comfortable on his feet right here. Beautiful wave, nice sweeping cutback. And uh, he goes down, but the damage was done. Nice clean barrel there for Mason. Late drop, just picks the perfect line right there, almost on the foam ball on the takeoff there. Adjusts his line beautifully. Mason with that incredible style, making very difficult things look easy. That is what Mason Ho does best. Mason Ho's last wave comes in at a 5.5. Here goes another surfer with an incredible bloodline of tube riding. It is Kaimana Hockeys pulling in and going down at the end of this backdoor wave. Yeah, just unfortunate there for Kaimana. That wave did close out on him. 
Well, Kelly Slater with the perfect 10 makes it into semi-final number two. He is on the beach with Corbin Harris. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Kelly Slater. Congratulations. The first 10 of the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2015. Um, can you talk us through that ride? Yeah, I was just, I was get, I was sneaking wide because those guys, I, I caught a small one and so I didn't have any, I was last in priority line. When it's this size, there's a lot of little peaky ones on the end. And um, that one actually stretched out on the whole reef. And um, those guys were a little bit deep. And uh, from where I was, I think I was about as deep as you could have been, actually. They were just behind me, so they probably made a good call, but they could have blocked me on that one. Um, it was just one of those ones I just kept going, 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 going. Come on, just let me out the end this thing. And uh, it, was a pretty, it was about as long a barrel as you get on a day this size. All right, we all loved it here on the beach. Good luck uh, in the semifinals. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you guys. Well, thanks, Corbin. Kelly Slater yet again throwing out the highest heat score of the day. So Kelly Slater advancing through. C.G. Hobgood, he's been quiet throughout this heat. Here he goes at Pipeline, your former world champion and standout in Waves of Consequence. C.J. Hobgood, this way of not going to be what he wanted, goes down at the end. So C.J. Hobgood having a rough heat. Yeah, it's been a little slow in this heat. C.J. has so much experience out here, one of the very best big wave surfers in the world, a great tube rider. But that wave, as you mentioned, Chris, just a little bit on the small side, a little cover up, and he goes for the layback and goes down. So C.J. will be looking for one of those set waves to get a nice big open barrel. Well, having a look right now, Masatoshi Ono, your surfer from Japan, the goofy foot on his backhand. Bottom turns under the lip, barely missing disaster, but ends up with the ocean on top of him. Masatoshi Ono going down on a beast. Yeah, this was a big wave, a really good looking wave at backdoor. Does a great job to get under the lip there, but just unable to exit. And then of course, CJ on the left-hander here at Pipeline, just a quick little cover up. Yeah, and here's another angle of it for CJ. Drops in, looking for the barrel here. Just a small little barrel, does well on it. Comes into this inside section, blows his tail, goes for the layback, but uh, not going to be a very big score for CJ. Well, right now, your two goofy footers are up against the ropes, and here goes Mason Ho, late drop, trying to pull the impossible. Pipeline has other ideas for Mason Ho. He goes down at back door, and right behind him, surfers paddling in. It's Kaimana Hakis on a windy one, trying to pump, finding the tube, not too deep, racing down the line. Trying again, trying to do anything he can to find this inside section. This wave's not going to pan out for Kaimana. Almost had that tube on the takeoff, but Kaimana Hakis battled for a, a no-go. Yeah, here goes another look at Kaimana. Drops into this thing, does well right here at the start, disappears quickly there, but it's all about tube time. He would have liked to stay in that barrel a little longer. Does a nice wrap right here to finish this wave up. A decent backup score here for Kaimana. This angle is a little better. You can see he is in the barrel at the start. And uh, it was a quick barrel, but a nice open one. So Kaimana Wakias looking good, but he needs to spend more time in that tube to get the big scores. Well, with time winding down, Kaimana Hakis makes his way back out to the lineup. His scores are getting better, but he has yet to drop that massive wave that we've seen in previous quarterfinal heats. Meanwhile, Mason Ho stroking into a bomb here at backdoor, but pulls back. And uh, that was the right choice. That wave it did not look good. A very unruly situation at backdoor pipeline. Yeah, no doubt. If Mason pulls back, you know it wasn't the right wave. Here's CJ Habgood going backdoor on the backside. Clean drop here for CJ. Great job here to control his speed, really trying to slow down and get tube time. Unfortunately for CJ, that second section, not very hollow, but a nice barrel off the takeoff. Well, CJ needed something big right here. He did everything he could to maximize his potential here on the scoreboard. Just unfortunately for him, that wave did not run like we've seen some of the bigger scoring waves here at Backdoor. Yeah, great job, though, and beautiful technique from CJ. You see him just dragging his butt in the wall there to slow down and control that board speed. And uh, CJ, one of the very best tube riders in the world, but it's just going to be a mid-range score. Well, CJ looking to the beach, trying to find out what he needs. His last wave comes in at a four. So right now, he doesn't need something huge, just a wave to help him get into that advancing spot. Here's his last ditch effort. CJ Hobgood grabbing the rail, high and tight, streaking down the line. Can he find an exit? Cannot. CJ Hobgood cannot make the exit on a smaller backdoor runner.
Yeah, fantastic effort there from CJ. Never say die attitude, but unfortunately that wave just closing out at the end of this section. And with that, our semifinal number two is set. Masatoshi Ono and Mason Ho will meet up with Kolo Andino and Kelly Slater. Semi-final number one is underway. We've got local Hawaiian standout Ezekiel Lau going up against Sebastian Zietz. Past champ John John Florence and big wave surfer Ian Walsh. This is going to be a cracker of a heat. Chris Cote here with Mike Parsons ready for some action and we are right into it. Sebastian Zietz in the red paddling on a backdoor wave. Pulls in, stays in. Sebastian Zietz finds the exit, comes out clean. Seabass will get the early lead. And behind him, John John Florence on a nice looking wave here. Deep in the barrel, he comes out clean. You knew he would. Goes for the huge air reverse, lands on the wall and goes down. So a flurry to start this heat. Great opening wave there for Seabass and then John John Florence right behind him. Well, let's check in with Corbin Harris, who's on the beach with quarterfinal winner Mason Ho. Thanks, guys. Standing here with Mason Ho, coming out with flying colors in, in first position, going to the semifinals, mate. Um, What's your strategy moving forward? I know you were here last year and you're in with Kelly as well. Yeah, just um, just try to get the best waves as possible. It's always what it's about, surfing the heats. And uh, yeah, with Kelly and the other guys, it's gonna be it's gonna be a nice little heat or a nice heat because we're we, I feel like we're all kind of got the same um, what's that word? Same little strategy. So um, yeah, we're all just gonna go. Let's see who could finagle that thing. <laughs> Oh, we hope to see you soon. We'll let you get back to it, and good luck in the finals. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, congrats to Mason Ho. Thanks, Corbin. We'll back out in the lineup right now. Sebastian Zietz stalling on a backdoor wave, pumping through the barrel, comes out, but goes down. Mike, completed wave or not? Well, I believe the judges will deem that incomplete. He just nearly exited, but was unfortunate to go down there. Behind him, Zeke Lau in a nice barrel here. Good, clean opening tube to start this wave. Yeah, Ezekiel Lau, like you said, strong surfer from Honolulu, Oahu. He's going to try to give everything he had on that ender, but just comes up short. You see right here, he's in the whitewater. Not a good place to be. Here goes Ezekiel Lau on a backdoor wave. Yeah, this is a nice wave for Ezekiel. Grabs the wall there. I really like how he slowed down right at the start to get as much tube time as possible. Judges will like that. A nice turn. Powerful snap, goes for the second tube and just unfortunately gets clipped by that last section, but I love his approach. Really powerful surfing and then really deep tube ride right here from Seabass. Unfortunate though, just tried to move his front foot a little, went over the bump and the judges will definitely deem that incomplete. Would have been a great score had he exited clean. Out the back right now, having a look. Ian Walsh from the island of Maui, slowing down perfectly, riding in this tube. Can he come out? He does. Ian Walsh with a clean exit. Yeah, exactly what the judges are looking for, that clean exit. Stayed in the barrel as long as possible there, disappearing from the judges' view. Excellent surfing there from Ian Walsh. Right now, let's check in with Sal Maskela back at the Red Bull Signature Series studio. Thanks, Chris. Beautiful beaches, warm tropical water, Incredible barrels, amazing surfing. What else could we ask for? You guys have any stories or images from Pipeline? Want to share them with us? Please do so. Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can go to the RedBullSignatureSeries.com for even more behind the scenes content. You can also download our Red Bull TV app, which lets you watch this show and catch up on every episode from all seasons of the SIG series. You are watching the Vulcan Pipe Pro, and we are smack dab in the middle of semi-final number one. Out in the lineup, four surfers battling for the top two spots. Here goes Ian Walsh, late drop into the tube. Rides cleanly, but cannot make the exit. Gets eaten by the foam ball. Yeah, Ian Walsh trying to maximize his tube time there, just going down behind him. John John Florence going down as well. You can see the wind blowing right now into the face of these waves, creating those big ribs coming up the face of these rights. Incredibly difficult as that wind increases, these surfers having a few problems on the bumps. Well, when you see two surfers like Ian Walsh and John John Florence going down, you know it's gotta be tricky. There's Kelly Slater on your screen, putting on the red jersey, checking in for semi-final number two. Can he repeat, or will John John Florence make it out of this heat to battle Kelly in the final? Not if this guy has something to say about it, Sebastian Zietz pulling out high speed exit, flying out the back of a backdoor beauty. Well, that was a fantastic wave there from Sebastian Zietz. Really late takeoff, deep barrel on a set wave. 
Drops in right here, almost goes down, pokes his nose a little bit, pulls out of it and picks a perfect line, exits the barrel clean. A little aerial kick out right in front of the water photographers there. So Sebastian Zietz having a good time here in this semifinal, looking good for a berth in the final. Yeah, Sebastian needed a big score and I think that was just what the doctor ordered. He's pulling out of that wave, netting a seven point ride. Ezekiel Lau, meanwhile, out the back, a late drop, stomps on the tail, stands tall in the big backdoor wave. Another big stall from this Hawaiian powerhouse. Disappears again, comes out, throws a frontside hack to end it. Ezekiel Lau means business. Seabass, again, on his fourth scoring wave. Pulls in, cannot come out. A low scoring wave for Seabass, but his previous effort could be the difference maker. Yeah, Seabass having a very good heat, staying very busy, riding lots of waves, but Ezekiel Lau, that big set wave in the long barrel, judges are gonna love that. Powerful surfing here. Look at the size of this wave, late drop, stalling right here to get as deep as he possibly can. Pulls up nice and high in this wave and reads it perfectly. Comes out, I love this little stall bottom turn here, slowing things down again. Constantly looking for the barrel. And then behind him, of course, Seabass pulling into a beautiful looking wave, but it just didn't quite stay open. So not gonna be a big score for Sebastian, but Ezekiel Lau really looking good here. Has a great chance of getting through this heat. Ezekiel Lau's last wave of 7.33. That drops John John Florence into third place. John John needs a big score on your screen right now. Paddling, it's John John Florence escaping from the pack. Looks like he's on to something here at backdoor, stroking hard. He drops in, stalls it, tight in the barrel, standing up through the exit. Miracle worker, John John Florence, finds a perfect little backdoor wave, but will it be the score he needs? Yeah, it's gonna be very close. Incredible stuff there from John John Florence. Really clutch surfing to be able to find that wave. He did have priority right at the end of the heat. He needs a big score to turn the heat. Let's take a look here drops in it's a really clean wave love how he just stalls right off the takeoff hanging out of that tube as long as possible comes out has a little section right here jams a little layback just looking super comfortable super good on his board and uh you gotta think this is gonna be an excellent score for john john well he's looking for something in the near perfect range with scores coming in it looks like john john florence could just get it and ladies and gentlemen, yes, John John Florence drops the score he needs an 8.07. And with that score, John John Florence will be moving through into the finals with Sebastian Zietz. With two finalists already set, it's all about these next four surfers entering the lineup in semi-final number two. One of them, Kelly Slater, 11-time world champ. Will we see Kelly match up with John John in the final? We're about to find out. Right now, let's check in with Sal Masakela back at the Red Bull Signature Series Studio. To run an event like this, you need a minimum of three days of good to perfect surf out of an 11-day window. Now, imagine that pressure of deciding if the contest is a go for that day. You have competitors, fans, organizers, promoters, sponsors, TV crews, the entire world looking at you to make that call and green light the event. You make the right call, you're a hero. Everyone loves you. But if you make the wrong call, you want to immediately bury your head in the sand. It's very comforting knowing that Mother Nature ultimately has the last laugh. Hey, Dave. You close by? Yeah, the swells held up pretty nicely. It's, we've seen six, eight foot sets pretty consistent. We saw one set that sort of capped almost on second reef, which is nice. You know, wind could be an issue come around mid morning, mid day. Worst case scenario, we do a half day and get that first round done. All right, I'll see you when you get here. Hey, Chris. We feel good about it. We want to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 68 foot, some bigger sets, um, offshore. Still plenty of energy. So, I'm, I'm going for it. Yeah. Let's do it. OK. Yeah. All right, day one on. Yeah. 8 o'clock start. Okay. All good? Yeah. yeah. All right. Making the call for when the contest is going to run, it can be a pretty stressful process. There's a lot of different reports. You're looking at swell direction, consistency, what the wind's going to do, what's going to happen in the waiting period. So it's a, it's a really important call. Good morning, surf fans. Welcome to the Bonsai Pipeline. This is the 2015 Volcom Pipe Pro. Pipeline is showing its teeth today, six to eight foot with 10 foot sets. Round one action is turning on, and it's going to be epic. 
get some of those people in your ear like, oh, you blew it. You shouldn't have ran that first day. You should have ran this day. But it's like, you can't wait that long. You can't leave it to chance that much. You don't get too many pats on the back as surfer director. It, it comes down to the surf. You know, a successful contest, you got good surf, it's going to be a success. Sometimes you nail it, and sometimes you don't. You know, we've had times where we thought, hey, it'll be better tomorrow, and all of a sudden, the afternoon, it turns on, and it's one of the best days. I think you learn by experience, and you just give it your best shot, and that's all you can do, but it's stressful. Well, a thankless job making the call. If the waves are bad, it's your fault. If the waves are good, chalk it up to pipeline. So that was a great piece on how we say if it's a go or not. And thankfully, it's a go for us today. Pipeline going off here for semifinal number two. To start it off, Masatoshi Ono grabs his rail, dealing with those windy conditions, but the tubes are open. Fortunately for Ono, that one was not. Yeah, you can see the wind lines there. Wind really picking up here for this semifinal, so conditions are getting pretty tough. Masatoshi here on the backside pulls in. This wave looks pretty good, stays open for a bit, but unable to exit here. Great water shot as he pulls in, picks a line, just gets a little too high and gets clipped by the lip, goes over the falls and goes down. There you see the wind affected outside. Hopefully for these surfers in the lineup right now, the wind's gonna hold up just enough giving them opportunity for tube riding. Here goes Chloe Andino, pumping hard off the bottom, missing that first section, coming around and opting out. He's gonna paddle back out into the lineup. So that wave, not much opportunity for Chloe Andino. Masatoshi Ono right behind him on a medium-sized wave at back door, catches a rail on the drop-in, still manages to pull up into the tube. Unfortunately, he gets clipped. Yeah, pretty treacherous conditions there. Masatoshi just uh, caught a little wind bump there, and he goes down for a second time in a row. Previous way of Chloe and Dino realizing there wasn't going to be a barrel, so he rides around it. I think with these conditions, one quality score will really make a difference and get these surfers into the final. Well, you saw Masatoshi Ono getting smashed by a wave at back door. There's Kelly Slater paddling out the back. If anybody knows this lineup, it is Mr. Slater paddling into a back door wave, wind up the face, whips it under the lip, pumps into the tube, and the wave breathes and eats Kelly Slater, kicking him out the back. Yeah, the, the reason the wave breathes here is that reef is so shallow, you can actually see the warbles in the wave as we see Mason Ho with a clean barrel here, picks a nice line through it. So our first decent score of this semifinal goes to Mason Ho. Wave selection always very important. He gets a clean little barrel, not real deep, but a big set wave. Let's take another look here at Mason. Way far forward on his board, doing a good job to slow down right there, get a little bit of tube time and exiting clean. He surfs here on every swell, feeling very comfortable. The surfboard looks great under his feet. And uh, Mason Ho, you got to think over the coming years, he is going to win this event here at Pipeline. Yeah, that wave, you saw him a little bit of a throwback to the classic style right there, scooting up on the board. He gets a 2.57 for his first wave, so the best wave we've seen yet. But I can assure you, with this much talent in the lineup, we're going to see some bigger scores coming through. Chloe Andino. Taken off on a backdoor wave, goes for the big fins, free snap. Pulls it down, but again, the judges are looking for the two brides. Chloe Andino does not find one, throws a nice turn in the mix, but that's not gonna be the score he's looking for. And big sets rolling in out the back behind him. Like you said, all about the barrel. Nice turn there for Chloe, but he knows that's not gonna be a big score. Here goes the 11-time world champ, Kelly Slater using his priority. Looking down the line, this wave looks great. Nice long wall, threads the needle here through the barrel and exits cleanly. So that is gonna be our first score close to the excellent range as he had a lot of tube time. Kelly Slater looking very good right here. Well, just when you think conditions are deteriorating, leave it to Kelly Slater to find a diamond in the rough. You see right here, streaking down the line, pulls up right into the pocket, clean exit, Kelly Slater. No surprise here, this guy knows backdoor like the back of his hand. Yeah, this surfboard looks so good under his feet, just looks glued to him. Look at how fast he can transition and pick up speed when he needs to. I think that's the real advantage of the forefin in these conditions, and Kelly is dialed in right now. Speaking of dialed in, Mason Ho, he's looking for a tube, pumps down the line, just exits in front of the foam ball. Mason Ho showing some stoke right there. He just needed one final score to advance in the finals. Will it be enough, Mike? 
I think it may be Mason Ho doing a very good job there to exit right before that wave closed out. He wasn't looking for a very big score. And uh, let's take a look here. Mason using his priority. Good wave selection here. Just grabs the wall and right there he realizes it's going to close out. I'm coming out the front and he is stoked right there realizing that may be enough to see him into the finals. And with time winding down, indeed it is enough. 3.70, Mason Ho advances to the finals along with Kelly Slater, making for the ultimate matchup. Sebastian Zietz, John John Florence, Kelly Slater, and Mason Ho will do battle here at the Volcom Pie Pro. And we're here, we're ready for the finals, ladies and gentlemen. This is a matchup of epic proportions. Sebastian Zietz, John John Florence, Kelly Slater, and Mason Ho. This is a fantastic matchup for the best surfers in the world, and the uh, condition's really good right now. Looks like the wind has backed off a little bit. And John John Florence here, looks like he has inside position for this right. Very important to get that quick start. And it looks like John John Florence will strike first. Here goes John John on a massive backdoor wave, stalling in the pocket, exits with a big carve. John John Florence with an incredible start to the finals here at the 2015 Volcom Pipe Pro. Right behind him, Mason Ho on another backdoor bomb. Where is he? He's out. Mason Ho with an incredible backdoor wave. Perfect exit. Finishes it up with a clean wrap. John John and Mason, a one-two punch. Yeah, you see uh, Mason's sister there, Coco Ho. She loved it. Incredible stuff there from Mason Ho. Big backdoor barrel. So deep in this barrel. Look at how much time he spends in the tube. He's completely gone. This is a solid wave, really deep, stays in it, and reappears there. Mason Ho, fantastic start to this final. He was uh, third place last year in the Vulcan Pipe Pro. He wants to do better than that. And then John John just parking it in this big barrel, staying right on the foam ball, controlling that speed, throws the cool layback. Really nice style there from John John. So fantastic opening wave for John John Florence right here. Love how he just hit the brakes and all about tube time. He stays behind that curtain as long as possible. Well, the judges appreciating both waves. John John in 8.43. Mason Ho dropping in 8.6. An incredible start for both surfers from right here on the North Shore. So local knowledge paying off. But here goes Sebastian Zietz. He knows the tube, a late drop, and goes down an incredible wipeout for Sebastian Zietz. We're gonna keep our eye on the lineup to see if he pops up, and he does. Near disaster, Mike. Yeah, that was a pretty heavy drop for Sebastian. Seems like the waves are really turning on right now. John John behind him, just standing tall in this barrel. It's a drainer, and he comes flying out, throws the gigantic slob, and goes down a humongous air after a really long barrel. So John John Florence is off and running. Another massive score for sure. Nothing gets the crowd fired up like a barrel with a huge air on the finish. John John Florence adding insult to Sebastian Zietz's injury on this wave. You see Seabass on the inside taking it on the head as John John rides right past out of the barrel and into the air, nearly taking out our drone. That was an incredible air attempt. Let's take a look at the water angle here. Super deep in the barrel, controlling his speed, just hanging out nice and casual, knows he has a clean exit. Punts a gigantic slob, lands almost halfway down the face. And uh, he goes down as we take one more look. Does such a good job to nail that drop, get in under the lip, maximize that tube time, comes out the huge air almost out of frame there. And had he have landed that, it's a perfect 10, no doubt. But it's still going to be an excellent score for John. You got it, Mike. A 9.2. So even though John John didn't complete the aerial, the judges loving the tube ride the highest score so far of this final. Here goes Sebastian Zietz trying to climb back into this thing. Late drop, stalls into the barrel, hanging onto the face of this wave, rides through the foam ball, comes out, smashes the lip, goes down. But like we said, Mike, it's all about the tube here. Yeah, it is, and he did a really good job on that wave, Seabass. That'll be a good score to get him back in this heat. A lot of times when your opponents start with a really big score, you gotta just crawl your way back in it, and that's exactly what Seabass has done here. He's deep in this barrel, really able to stall and stay in there as long as possible. He goes down on the layback, but those turns not really factoring in. As you see right here, he just hits the brakes, completely gone from the judge's view, and stays in that tube as long as possible. Fantastic surfing there from Seabass. Well, Sebastian Zietz, the tube ride pays off. His last wave, a 7.0. 
So Seabass inching his way up into the leaderboard, but John John Florence right now looking unstoppable. Meanwhile, Sebastian Zietz going for a second scoring wave, pulls in, fighting against this wave at back door, and goes down. So Seabass looking for something big, does not pan out for him. Yeah, he already has that one good score, that seven. He's looking to back it up right there. A smaller inside wave, sometimes you have to take a chance when you don't have priority. Looks like a pretty good wave here. He pulls in, he's really deep in the barrel, gets a little high there and just gets tossed by the lip. So Seabass going down, that'll just be a backup score, but uh, an excellent try underneath priority to get that score. Yeah, I like Seabass trying to claw back into this thing. Meanwhile, Kelly Slater, really quiet. Two waves of uh, no consequence, really. His back is against the wall, needs a big score. Kelly Slater drops in, bobbing and weaving down the line at back door. Can he make it out? He does. Kelly Slater is right back into this final. Still speeding down the line, goes to the front side air, releases his fins. Kelly Slater climbing back into this heat. Yeah, just in the nick of time here, Kelly, let's take a look. A smaller inside wave, but it has a great wall on it. Drops in, pumps really hard here, picks a nice line through this barrel. He's gone for a lot of tube time, slams the oncoming close out here. He thought about a big air and uh, just thought better of it and slams the ending section there. So beautiful surfing here from Kelly. Look at how fast his board is weaving through this tube, just picking a perfect line. Kelly really looking good on his board right here. Comes into this inside section, thought about the air, and lands the re-entry. That's the type of surfing we expected from Kelly Slater. Well, he makes the difficult look so easy. Sebastian Zietz, meanwhile, in white, drops in, trying to find the escape. Gets smashed on the inside at back door. Behind him, Mason Ho, a late drop, fully extended into the barrel, dragging that back arm, speeds out, straightens off into the chop hop. A little celebration for Mason Ho. The family's stoked, the beach is going wild. Mason Ho is making his claim to be the champ here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Yeah, incredible surfing there for Mason Ho. What a fantastic way to finish this heat. Long, deep barrel. He's been on fire this whole week and we'll wait for that score. They needed something big. Here comes a score and it's not enough. There he is, John John Florence, your champion of the 2015 Volcom Pipe Pro. So John John Florence takes the win. Mason Ho in second place, Kelly Slater in third, Sebastian Zietz in fourth. With that incredible win, John John Florence will be met at the water's edge by his friends and family, cheering him up the beach in glory. John John Florence will get the Red Bull signature moment. Arguably the best ever to surf pipeline. John John Florence absolutely dominating here at the Vulcan Pie Pro. After claiming three consecutive titles from 2011 to 2013, John John had a disappointing event in 2014, exiting in the first round. This year, he came back to reclaim the title, now winning the Vulcan Pie Pro a record four times. Florence adjusted to the ever-changing conditions at pipeline and backdoor, using his vast knowledge of the spot to ride deep barrels, blast huge airs, and show the world why he is the very best at the backdoor pipeline. Congratulations to John John Florence, dominating this final heat from the get-go to become the 2015 Volcom Pipe Pro Champion. Here he is, one more time with Corbin Harris. Next to me right here, the 2015 winner. Hey, what's it like to be back on top? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. You know, last year I had a really bad year in this event. I lost my first seat and just to come back and winning it this year, especially against those guys in that final, you know, Mason and Kelly and CEO. So look up to all those guys and been surfing against Mason and Seabass since I was a little kid. And those guys have always been like a little bit older than me and a little, always like kind of beating me the whole gums. And so to win, I'm, I'm stoked. Hey, we'll let you go celebrate. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Back to you guys. Absolute domination. Yeah, from the start of the final to the end, it was the John John Florence show. He could not be touched here today at Pipe. And with that, we'll turn it back over to Sal Masakela. Thank you, Chris, and thanks to all of you guys for hanging out at the 2015 Volcom Pipe Pro from the Vines Eye Pipeline on the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii. Incredible surfing from both the veterans and the progressive rising stars, and congratulations to that guy, John John Florence. Huge win, fourth title, in five years, and he's just a kid still. Also, gotta give congrats to Mason Ho, who went from third last year to second today. I'm Sal Masakella, and we'll see you next time.